Welcome to the second episode of Between Two Pawns. Uh, today with us is our Grandmaster in Residence at the St. Louis Chess Club, Vladimir Georgiev. Uh, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming Nice in. to meet you. Man. So, when did you become a Grandmaster? Officially, I got the title 2000. 2000? Oh, wow. Yeah, after the Congress. Right, right, right. Uh, but I played on the level of Grandmaster many years. I go like... I have 25, 65, maybe four or five years before, before officially I become G. How long had you been playing chess total then before that? Oh, oh, tough questions. Maybe like less than 20 years. I'm sorry, how long? Less than 20 less years. Than, okay. okay, cool. So do you feel like your journey to becoming a Grandmaster was normal? Was that typical or did it feel like that's what everyone else was doing? Or what was your take on your, your own personal journey to that? That's what I wanted to do all my life. Even I was in the university for two years, then I decided to stop to focus more on chess. And after that, I quickly became GM. What were you studying or what, what, what path did you, would you have gone down if it had not been chess? No idea. <laughs> I always wanted to play chess. Right. And what, do you, what do you attribute that to? Like as a kid, was that introduced at a young age or why do you think you always had that passion for chess? Maybe because my parents was playing chess at home. Right. I mean, my mom and my father. And then I wanted to play chess too. I played in the kindergarten. Then when I, I was five years old. And then I wanted to play real chess. And then I'm in the chess club. Huh. I was going there and I improved fast. I become many times champion of Bulgaria for all this age. Five, uh, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth oh, grade. Wow. <laughs> all this under 20, then for the men. and. Basically, I wanted to play chess all my way. Right, that's awesome. So, what's your most memorable game? My most memorable game is against Carson. Okay. <laughs> I played against him 2014 okay. when he was number one. Where and then that? the same years I played against Caruana, who was number <laughs> two. And now again, they're number one and two. Right, right. I mean, I lost both games. But of course they're very memorable and I was very surprised when I played Carson and I was thinking people joking to me. I said, no, no, don't joke with me. I couldn't play him <laughs> because I was playing second Norwegian Liga oh, wow. team competition. He was playing final match. The team who quali win will qualify for the top division. Right. Huh. And they told me the match is in Oslo. Maybe he could come tomorrow because he's signing the club, but he never played. Right. Hmm. But say, okay, of course he will not come, you know. Right. But then they told me he decided to come. He wanted to see his friends, nice. to support them. And then I played him. I was right. very excited. Yeah? And I <laughs> celebrated after that. Even, <laughs> even it doesn't matter, I lost. I was really right. happy. Right, yeah. playing. It's not about, you know, yeah. at that point. So who's the highest rated player you beat? Uh, was Elianov. The, when I beat him, he was number six in the world. Oh, wow. So after he won few Grand Prix, uh, he was like 2760 at that point. I exactly remember he was number six in the world when I beat him. Wow. Now he's not so strong, but, but still. I was close <laughs> to beat Topalo when he was number one in the world. But instead to try to win, I made perpetual check. So <laughs> that's funny. Um, so with when you come to St. Louis and you play, do you play better here or worse here? Worse here. Worse here? What do you think yeah. that is? <laughs> Uh, because I already was coaching, so how you know it's completely different to be a professional chess player, very focused on your own self, right. than to think about preparing others and then just to play because to kind of keep in shape, yeah, in yes. chess shape. Yes, yes, yes. So that's why when I started to play first time in St. Louis, like 2014 or 15, I don't remember, I was not so strong like mm. before. Is your main, is coaching your main job? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Is tutoring, yes. coaching, private yeah. lessons, whatnot? Yeah. Do you, how do you get your students? How do you find students? The truth is usually they finding me. Right. So I'm not really, not really publishing myself. Or, right. So they heard maybe I'm coaching some good students and like that they contact me. Okay, cool. So what's your favorite game besides chess? Before to come here in USA, I mean, I'm living since 2014 in USA, I like soccer oh, right. mainly, 
But after I move here, I like more uh, football, yeah, American yeah. football. Yeah, I enjoy to watch. It's very strategic game for myself. I like to see what decision coach is taking. Yeah. Yes, they have this, especially when they're playing this game, clock game, yeah, short of time and timeouts. And it's very interesting for me. Yeah, Too much is, strategy. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, if you were not playing chess professionally or not coaching and not teaching, what do you think you'd be doing if you could do anything else? I never thought about this, <laughs> so it's tough. Maybe when I was kids, I played soccer. Maybe I could become a good soccer yeah, player, never knows. <laughs> but then I considered to stop soccer just to focus on chess. Right, right. Um, what are your thoughts on the World Championship right now? Oh, difficult questions. Everybody expect, I mean hope, not really expect hope for some decisive game to become more uh, interesting, but the truth is, Everybody likes to become world champion, nobody likes to win games, so they are doing their best, but the pressure is really high. Little bit more high, not little bit, maybe more high in Caruano, because it's her first, first try to become world champion, and if he's not gonna win, maybe he will never get the same chance. So that's why it's not easy for him either, and I think he understands he should try to push more, to win maybe in the regular time, because mm -hmm. in the tiebreak, I think Carson has more chances. And that's why I expect it now to be more risk from Caruana and probably some decisive game. Also, I can see they're becoming tired. Right. <laughs> that it's easy to understand because they even not from the real game, they're becoming tired from the whole process preparation and yeah, then right. it's, you know, it's a before the time. match and then during the match surprises, yeah. So mentally, it's very tough. What would you do differently, if anything, as an organizer to make either the games more decisive or more, you know, the, the viewing public definitely is, is upset that the games have all been draws, but, you know, they're what, not there for the public. But do you think there's something that organizers could do differently? What I like, and I told many years ago, because they was organizing big tournaments in Sofia and Master with top players. Mm -hmm. I, for me, the most logic is two games per day, 50 minutes or even one hour without delay, without increment, or let's say 50 minutes plus 10 minutes, 10 seconds right. delay, but no increment. I hate increment because that's not logic to me. In any sport, they are not gonna give you extra time because you need time to score sure, or sure. whatever. <laughs> and that's why in football you have timing, yeah? Clock is going fast and you should but it ends. <laughs> attack yeah, faster, for example. Uh, I think two games is good per day, one hour per game, white and black, everybody is happy, more rounds. I think it's very fair. No five black or four black or four white, five black. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is very good. Interesting. All right, well, thank you for joining us. It's great interview. Thank you for uh, inviting me. If you guys have any questions at home, we'll try to get them to them again. Welcome to our comment commentary section of Between Two Pawns, where I respond to readers' questions on our last week's video of Between Two Pawns. And the first thing I want to address is why we're not uploading any of the World Chess Championship live today in chess coverage. And we will be doing that, but due to the nature of the World Chess Championship, we're not posting any of our Today in Chess shows or interviews for rebroadcast until the conclusion of the match. So once it's over, they'll all go up. Uh, but you can watch live every time there's a round at 9 a.m. Central. So to get to the reader responses, first, uh, Lasso Lucidora wants to know who are the pawns and what is between them? Excellent question. Artem MS5, MSK says, a great episode. Much love to Jesse. I love the way he teaches chess in his videos and I wish the interview with the chess philosopher would be longer. Throbber wants us to know that it's so boring now that Feingold's gone. And lastly, Piggy Pig Pig, this is overproduced garbage, like someone had just learned how to edit videos. The music and pawns detract from the interview. Well, Piggy Pig Pig, this is why. Our next Grandmaster in Residence is Katerina Nemsova. She will be here uh, after Thanksgiving for a long time, so if you have any questions for her, please email us and let us know. Thanks.